Hi guys, this is Emily. Um, today I want to show to you how to do a pre-registration as predicted. As predicted was created by a set of research, researchers at Wharton and this pre-registration is kind of part of a movement to have open science, open data and also to be able to do reproducible research. So on AskPredicted.org you'll want to create a new pre-registration and then answer a set of questions. You could also just try things out if you just want to test something. Um, first, you'll have to put in the names and email addresses and institutions of the authors who are part of the project or the study that you're pre-registering. Um, then you uh, will have to say whether you've already collected data. Um, ideally, you um, obviously should have not collected any data because a pre-registration um, assumes that this is the first time that you're collecting your data. So you'll always want to click no. Then you want to pre-register your hypotheses. You should be with this um, as explicit as possible, um, pre-registering kind of in line with what your later um, tests will be as well. You want to pre-register the DV, the number of conditions in your study, the exact analyses you want to run. So that could be that you will run a t-test or that you will run an ANOVA or a regression. Um, you want to include all of the different covariates you might want to use in a regression um, and just be very explicit about the exact analysis you want to run because this obviously then reduces the um, ability to p-hack um, your data and it's a, it's a good tool to just make yourself or tie your own hands. Um, then um, you also want to pre-register any outliers or exclusions. So assuming that you do some sort of an attention check um, and you plan on excluding people, you also have to specify that here. Um, if you exclude people who, uh, for example, didn't um, provide like good answers to like an open response question, you want to put that down here as well. Um, next, you want to specify the sample size um, and how you determine that. So, for example, if you um, collect um, 200 participants on MTurk or on Prolific Academic, you'll want to um, write that down. Um, I usually say how many participants I plan on recruiting per condition here. Um, yeah. Uh, one thing I've actually recently noticed, which I, I would recommend that you do too, is that um, a lot of these platforms actually don't um, sample exactly the number that you plan. So, um, for example, uh, on MTurk, I've, I've noticed that they always sample like five people extra or so, and especially, especially on like these um, panels, like um, MTurk panels and um, Qualtrics panels, uh, they really over recruit people and um, I actually like over sampled by over 200 people um, in one study and so I would say that you say you specify the the amount of people in your um, platform but then obviously any over or under recruiting of that platform um, is due to the platform and not due to your own choice. Um, and then finally you also want to pre-register anything else that you might be doing so up here, you only specify the like the main analyses that um, that answer the main hypotheses, or um, um, but not any other questions that you might be doing. So if you have like a secondary prediction that is not essential to your um, to your main hypothesis, it might even be exploratory. Um, you want to put that down here as well. Um, I also always write down that I'm collecting like my demographics um, here or um, Often, like I also specify my attention checks down here because I don't plan on actually um, excluding any participants, but I usually still collect attention checks just to see how good my data is. And so then I'll say that I'll analyze my uh, my data with with the attention check and without the attention check in the in the set. Finally, um, you want to just give your your um, pre-registration a name and then specify what the what type of um, study it is. Um, and then, okay, I can't go to the preview, but once um, I've done this, I can actually preview my pre-registration and then I will be able to like reread my pre-registration and make any edits. And then I will um, accept my pre-registration and the pre-registration will then be sent to all of the authors that I mentioned up here. And then um, all of the answers, uh, all of the authors have to accept this pre-registration and once we've all hit um, accept in our personal email or in our institution email, 
um, then the pre-registration will be in the list of pre-registrations. And so for me, um, they would end up on like my main website and I could then review them and make them public. I don't know if I can show you now. I think I first have to go back into my email. Let's see. So in order to review my studies, I would have to um, send myself an email. So I just did that and then go to my pre-registrations. I click on them here and then I get my list of pre-registrations. And depending on uh, the stage of the uh, pre-registration, it'll either be anonymized already or not. So if I haven't made it anonymous, this is just something that I can see myself. Um, so for example, if I had just submitted something, I could see my pre-registration. This is a pre-registration that I made um, a few days ago. And if I then want to make it public, for example, for review, for blind review, I, um, I hit make anonymous P um, PDF. And then um, if people insert this link, they actually end up seeing my pre-registration. Um, and that's what I will actually then end up putting into my paper. And this would be accessible. And this is anonymized, which means that it's okay for peer review because um, it doesn't say who was creating this project or this study. So I wanted to show you an example of how I work on pre-registrations um, before I actually put in the information. And I usually start with a blank Word document like this one, where I just copy paste my questions from the pre-registration, from the Ask Predicted website, and then I write my text to answer the questions. So for this project, um, it's a project on emissions, and um, I, I noted down here the, the hypotheses. Um, I usually still kind of say what the main um, setup is of the study. I do that, and later I can use this text also for my write-up of the paper in the study, of, of the study in the paper. So um, even though it takes a bit of time, um, I can recycle it. And then this is the main prediction. So here I predict that participants will be more likely to infer that their friend dislikes Italy versus Greece when the friend visited two as opposed to 10 countries. And that um, I then say is going to be tested through a t-test. Um, and I also conduct like a difference measure um, between two, two measures here. So as you can see, I'm, I'm very specific with my with my pre-registration. I say exactly what will be measured. I usually explicitly actually write down the exact words. Um, and then from what to what I'm measuring it, I, I specify the conditions I'm assigned to, what test I'm doing. Um, and then here I say, okay, I want to collect 300 participants from, from MTurk. Um, and then this is what I've, I've recently started to add. It's um, deviations from the school will be due to over and under sampling from the platform. And then this is my anything else. So um, a couple of other measures that are not that, not that relevant to the main question being asked. Um, I also say that I'm going to measure whether people have ever been to Greece and Italy and I collect demographics. This is kind of my example. And then I would just copy paste that into the, into the questionnaire on Ask Predictive, making it public later. So yeah, that was it. Um, how to pre-register something on askpredictive.org.